Welcome back to Crafty Mama. This is our third and last video on how we created our cattle panel greenhouse. For the greenhouse plastic, we went with a 6 mil that we purchased on Amazon. It was 25 feet by 40 feet long. And here we're just trying to open it the best we can so that we can pull it over to the other side. And then we will use the roofing nails to then attach it. Here comes my mama to the rescue so that we don't hopefully rip it. And you'll see around the front and back domes, we put down a pipe insulation so that the plastic would not rip on the cattle panels. Um, we did not get the kind that have the adhesive and so they kept trying to come off. So my advice to you would either be the one or get the ones that have adhesive or just use some double sided tape. Alright so we already have the far side plastic tacked on. Now we're going to tack on this side real quick just so that we don't have it flying in our face basically. As I showed in the previous video, we did have issues with the plastic ripping right where some of the nails are, as well as, I don't think I showed you, but on the far side, we caught it on something, and we're not sure what we caught it on, but we used the clear Gorilla Tape that you can get for outdoor use, and it's worked awesome. We even used it on the very top of the greenhouse plastic. I used it on the inside, actually because it was maybe two days after this video was taken, we got a hailstorm and we got a couple of holes in the top. Here's just a close up of Chris putting the nails in, just trying to not necessarily get it as tight as possible, which is probably one of the reasons why it ripped so easily, but just trying to get it started and then um, after we got done doing the sides, the front, the back for that day, we were pretty much done. This was actually on Easter, which is why my mom was there. And uh, by the time we got done, we were all pretty sunburned. So for the back, which is where we're at now, we did not cut out the window panel. We actually attached the big sheet of it by folding it over and trying to make it as flat as possible and as tight as possible and then attach that with the roofing nails uh, to either side. And then after we got the bases of all of them done, then we went back and actually cut out the window and the door plastics. I even tried helping with the hammering, but I couldn't get a decent angle on it. Um, so I wound up just letting Chris do it on his own because I love my husband to death and I trust him with a lot of things. But having a hammer that close to my face, that is not one of them. Alright, time for the front. Like I said before, we did not cut the opening for the door before we actually attached it to the sides. Um, we actually did attach it to the sides of the door frame and then later had to take that part off so that we could add the hinges and that kind of thing. But it made it easier and it didn't fly around as much, which I kind of felt would probably make more holes than attaching it to the frame, 
So it wasn't too big of a deal. We bought them covering that part with wood anyway, so there was no air coming in or out. So as he's hammering in the nails here, he is trying to pull the plastic from the sides into the middle so that it's as tight as can be over the edge where the pipe insulation is in the corners. But see, you can tell right there, there's a couple of holes from the nails, which is where I just went ahead and took some clear Gorilla tape for outside use and it was really easy to tear. I didn't have to use a knife or scissors or anything and let me tell you, I am not strong and I just patched it really good, a couple of pieces on each one, and it has held up amazing. These 1x2s are being repurposed from our basement where we took out our drop ceiling and we're putting it on the seam where the 2x10s are to basically just tighten that plastic down even more and having something go all the way across as opposed to the roof nails that obviously only hold it in certain places and this worked awesome. As you can see Chris put a screw in in the front or on one side and then on the other end of it and then now he's just kind of slowly going through every so often and pulling it down, putting a screw in, so forth. Um, here our youngest son is helping hold it so that Chris can mark it, then he'll go cut it and put it up. Pretty basic things. We didn't have an issue with any of it until we got to the front. So I cut off some of the extra plastic beforehand just because I'm clumsy and I would fall in it, but we did not cut off the extra um, on the front or the back until after we put this strip in and after we put in the door window. Okay, so we'll learn from our mistakes. You can see Chris and Vaughn are holding the wood up, he's marking it, he's putting it in, all is fine and dandy, right? No, all is not fine and dandy and you'll see that in just a minute. So, funny story, our greenhouse actually got picked up and moved a couple of feet by some really heavy winds. So we put those U-posts in so that it wouldn't be able to move as easily. Here you can see we took some more one by twos so that we can attach the plastic nice and tight around the window and I'm just putting a big X in it. That seemed to be the easiest way of doing it. Um, I'm going to try to pull or push. Chris is going to screw the wood on. This is also going to give us kind of like a lip for the window to come down into so that it doesn't overextend.
So you can see at the very top of the side, there is just a small gap between where the sides are and where the top uh, bracket is there. Not that big of a deal since we do have the window actually going in there because that's going to take up any kind of air gaps. And here I'm trying to help again and as you can see, definitely cannot get it to grow in like it needs to, so we finally just say screw it, let's switch around, I'll hold it, pull it, and you screw it. This works so much better. All right, see, I told you we had to take those roof nails out because now we're gonna put in the frame around to keep the plastic nice and tight in the door frame. But to do that, we have to take these out so that we can get it nice and tight and around. And then we realize we have to take the other side out because we need to be able to put the hinges in and then we have to put the board around the hinges, but you'll see that here in a minute. So once again, we attached it a little bit at the top, a little bit at the bottom, and then I'm going to pull it nice and tight, and he's going to attach it the rest of the way. Now, we were not thinking, apparently, maybe we were having too much heat on us, but we weren't thinking, oh, hey, you know what, we need to make sure that the door is going to work in there and actually be able to open, and yeah, it was kind of a long day. So we want to pathing Nagel in a little bit once we put the door frame in there before you even put the plastic on the door, but that's coming up in another clip. This might be my absolute favorite part, being able to cut the extra plastic off. It was a scorcher inside of that greenhouse, which is great, that's what it's there for. But it was probably 75 degrees out this day, which means it was well over 100 in that greenhouse. And I was dying of heat. Alright, so, Chris is putting the hinges on for where the door is going to be. And we're realizing that we're going to have to mark around where the, the hinges are to be able to put the wood pieces on correctly that we can't just put one big piece in. So while Chris takes the roofing nails out, I am going to try to open up some of our old water guns because the boys were playing in the water since it was nice and warm out that day. I was impressed. Chris got most of the nails out and the only hole that was in it was where the nail went. He didn't rip it or anything. So the plastic that we got is definitely good. Uh, we just, I think, hit it a few times and that's why it was ripping. But with those out, then we were able to pull the plastic nice and tight and basically kind of use the hinges 
to hold that part of plastic tight before we got the wood on there. So not only did Chris mark where he needed to cut, but he also labeled the pieces so that he would know where each one of them went. And just like that, in YouTube time, here we go attaching all the wood from top all the way down to the bottom. Something to note, if you do not have very much upper body strength, like me, use your body weight to pull the plastic because there was no way I was going to use just my arm muscles. My arms still hurt after doing this, but they would have hurt a lot more if I hadn't utilized the body weight because I got plenty of there to use. I was so excited for this piece to get cut off, it just kept smacking us right in the face no matter what we were doing. Woohoo! Time to put the door frame in and this is where we realized that we didn't put the border around the sides quite how we needed to, so we could get the door open. Houston, we have a problem. So a couple things we realized. One, the frame piece that we put on that side was a little too far over, so it was catching it. And two, even though we made the door frame square, because of the greenhouse being lifted and moved that time, plus just settling, um, yeah, stop pulling on it, Rachel, dumb butt. Uh, it wasn't quite square anymore. and. Like we mentioned before, the ground already wasn't the most level, so we wound up having to lift the greenhouse and put old pieces or unused pieces of pallet wood to try to make it as level as possible. And then we did actually cut down just a little bit where it was still catching. Finally time to get the plastic on the door and the window. So we laid the door frame down on the table and on the little rolling saw horses, added some plastic on top, cut up, cut off at least part of the extra plastic. We wanted enough so I could grab a hold and pull or push. And then we're using some one by twos just like we did on the frame of the greenhouse, marking it, cutting it screwing it on and then we're going to tighten it on the other side and just work our way around it basically. Now I will say after using the door on the greenhouse for we're going on four or five weeks, I definitely want to put a couple of cross braces if nothing else for when we push open the door or to grab it to pull it closed from the inside so that we're not accidentally poking holes in the plastic. 
but I think for those we're just going to use some one by 2s and have them go across. So we found out doing the greenhouse frame that starting the screws, at least part of them, all the way across makes it so much easier because then I can pull it and he can just tighten all of them down. Alright, so we have the side closest to me. Screw down for the most part. We're going to get these screws set in. Then I'm going to grab that extra bit and I'm just going to pull. And I'm just going to try to get it as tight as possible. Um, it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. So we started in the center, then we went to each side. And then it made it a little bit easier since they were already been somewhat tightened to finish screwing them in. and then tighten down the other side. I'm just using a box knife that I'm pretty sure I wound up stealing from one of my previous jobs um, to cut it right up against that 1x2 frame that we're putting on. I will say, obviously, it's not the easiest to do when there's nothing to push against. So, ever so often I did need a pair of scissors, but for the most part, the box knife worked just fine, got it up nice and close, we didn't have any random plastic flapping around. Um, and then I just use the scissors on the outside of it. So now that the two long sides are done, the top and bottom are next. To put the top and bottom on, I'm actually going to fold the sides in just like you would if you're wrapping a present. So basically the side goes to the bottom and makes it nice and arched. And then we're going to pull it up and that should keep it so that they're the ends, the rough ends, are all enclosed, if that makes sense. Hopefully it did. Alright, so here you maybe we'll see kind of what I'm talking about. We're going to pull that in, we're going to pull this in, it's nice and smooth, and then Chris is going to slide that one by two in there, pull it tight, and attach it. And then, like I said, and there's no rough ends, which the plastic's not necessarily going to fray, but if there's a lot extra, it will catch the wind. Like I said, we are in the middle of Kansas, and uh, we're not known to just have non-windy days. All right, final walk through. So on the door, we don't have anything to keep it open minus the bricks as of yet. Uh, we did put a plain latch, plain door handle on it. The quote unquote shade cloth that we have on is just some tarps that we got at Walmart that we used our torch to cut and then split between the plastic and the fencing. 
Um, we do have a door stop there so that it doesn't overextend. I already got some plants in there, some seedlings. Uh, at this point, some of them are looking a little yellow because I literally had just put them out there. But so far, they are doing just fine. That wood is going to be for the bookshelves we're going to be building, or the shelving for in here, and then some other random gardening things. Um, so we only put the shade cloth on the top and on the right side because that's where the evening sun is, which is going to be the hottest. For the window, we put the same kind of latch as we did on the door on the window. We have a handle. And then, like I said before, we also put that uh, pulley system in with the, I don't know if that's called a boat latch, maybe? So we just weave it over and under and over and under. Um, and then after this video, I actually use some more of the tape to put on the ends. And then there is the spray foam in, in all of its glory. We just put it wherever we saw there might be sunlight coming through um, and that that has helped amazing with keeping the temperature a lot more even. Like I said in the first video we attached the cattle panels together with this, just some zip ties um, ever so often and then we actually did attach the tarps on it on the inside just in one area uh, we made a hole and then used some zip ties just to keep them up and not falling down because they were trying to slide down on us. Alright, so here is our supplies list. I think I'll get everything on there. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I might have forgotten something. That is a rough estimate about $530 for this greenhouse. Now something very similar that we were looking at online in a kit um, with shipping was going to cost close to triple that price. So I'm very, very happy with the price and the greenhouse just in general. Um, like I said, let me know if you have any questions because I might not have explained something quite right. It's been known to happen. I know. Surprising, right? So tell me, if you guys have a greenhouse, how long can you grow in it? And what do you like to grow in your gardens? This year we're doing quite a few different tomatoes, uh, cucumbers for pickles, zucchini, yellow squash, watermelon pumpkins. Um, we're going to work on our cottage garden and get some of our perennials in. We got probably close to 25 asparagus planted, uh, blueberries, elderberries. I mean, let me know what your guys' go-to is and maybe your zone so I know, hey, maybe I could add that into mine. But with that, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.